Well, a really warm welcome to this evening of hope and how lovely to see you all, our friends, our supporters in this beautiful place. A place of calm, a place of light, a place of spirit, and of course, a place of hope. Together with love, with understanding, with togetherness, and in solidarity. And the first time that we've all been together like this for three years, and so it's extra special to be here with you tonight, this safe place in the heart of London, and filmed tonight so that the people who can't be with us tonight will also be part of this event with us all together. I'd like to say a special thank you to Hal from the Borough Chapel for so generously opening his doors to us in so many ways, his generosity of spirit and helping make all of this happen for us and really part of the community with us all, as we all are, our friends, our supporters, our allies, our partners, this family. Unified in a really common purpose and a common endeavour and mission. And for me, a special thanks to all of you and the team at Missing People, the staff and the volunteers who lead with such energy and passion for such an important mission. There have been many special moments in this last year um, and we're always so touched by how people across the whole of the UK want to help families who have someone that they love who's missing. And they want to help people who are missing, who are out there. And so they go running, they go walking, they go cycling, slightly sweaty in lycra, they raise funds for us, they share their expertise with us, they share their time with us. They are part of us all together. And I'd like to say an extra special thank you this evening to Nikki Durbin, who so kindly has presented our special Christmas Radio 4 Appeal, which will be broadcast on the 18th of December. So thank you, Nikki, for speaking on behalf of all of us. <coughs> and so to the power of music. So tonight we're delighted that we've got the Missing People Choir here and also the Corey Borough Choir with them, bringing song and cadence and music and melody to this evening. And most importantly, to the families of missing people who have crafted this evening and for writing words to share with us this evening, especially for tonight. So thank you to all of you. And I'm now going to hand over to the choirs. Thank you. <laughs>
<clears throat> Our first reading tonight is going to be read by Julie Stammers. Julie is the mother of Anthony Stammers. He's been missing since 2012. <clears throat> Helen by Valerie Nettles, mother of Damien Nettles, whose um, Damien has been missing since 1996. Christmas. Do I care? Yes, you are still there, smiling in my heart and mind. I still have my memories. A small boy by the Christmas tree, on bended knees, shrubby hands opening presents with glue. Smiles of happiness, sounds of laughter and love. This picture fades to darkness, a waking moment. I ask, how can it be? You are missing, but you are here. But life has a starkness. We still hold your memory dear. We live betwixt night <coughs> and light. It's just a memory, yet vivid drifting through my mind as I search for what binds us. It's love and hope and kindness. Hope is the place where we live now. You are still with me while we wait for the answers. Thank <laughs> you. 
a poem called Christmas Morning, which was written by Tina O'Donnell, Val Metals, Ros Hotchkiss, and Marlene O'Donnell. Christmas in a teardrop, wise with age but shining still, saying everything you would wish to say yourself at this special time for us all. The wind whistles through the small spaces between rugged timbers. Light flickers within the kerosene lamp. Outside, the frost flitters on the pine trees as the winter snow settles onto frozen ground. A man with a sleigh appears through a flurry of snow hauling a Christmas tree, and a dog chases him home, expecting a warm pillow by the fire. Pine cones wander foraged from forest floors, pushed deep into pockets, attentively daubed white by small hands, glued and glittered, suspended on delicate silver spun glory threads inside a fragile glass bell, like a transparent pear drop. We gaze through the glass into winterland, peace, tranquility, and beauty frozen in time, just like memories of our loved ones. Now, a few words from Justin McLaren, who is the um, head of Your Royal Highness, friends, colleagues, and most importantly, family members. On behalf of all the trustees and missing people, I'd like to thank you for inviting us to share this evening with me. This is a very special event and one that we treasure as much as I hope and know our families do. I'd like to congratulate our choir and all our performers and writers whose creativity and dedication is coming through so strongly this <coughs> evening and helps to make this evening such a special event. Now, I know you're not meant to talk politics in chapel, but this weekend I was thinking about President Clinton and two quotes that come from his political career. The first was on the wall of his campaign office during his presidential campaign that said, it's the economy, stupid, signifying its importance in the election ahead. And it's a phrase that's resonating with us a great deal at the moment. So as trustees, we know how hard the current economic times are on the staff and volunteers of missing people. How we need to look after them 
and always ensure a sustainable financial future for our charity. But at the same time, we're also fully aware that tougher economic times lead to an increase in people going missing. Crisis events in people's lives are exacerbated during times of financial worry, and the harder the economic times, the greater the need for our charity, and not least for the families we serve. Which is why we're very grateful to the generosity of many people here today whose individual, corporate, government or family donations mean the charity can contribute to do its work where it's most needed. So thank you. The other President Clinton quote that keeps coming back to me came when his campaign hit a few self-inflicted buffers. The Governor of Arkansas, with his headquarters in Hope, he ended his comeback speech with the words, I still believe in a place called hope. And that phrase, more than any other, speaks to me about missing people. Because the toughest times, sometimes a belief in hope, is all we have. We may feel hopeless, but if we believe in hope, there is something to keep us going. In a few minutes, we're going to light a candle and then pass it to each other so all our candles are ultimately lit from the flame of the first. And hope is like candles. For as long as there is one candle lit, we can all light ours. And for as long as one person in this room has hope, we can all find ours. To lead this part of the service, I'd like to welcome Sir Trevor MacDonald, a man who's been an immense supporter of missing people across our 29 years. A man whose commitment to our charity, his support, his good humour, his compassion are so appreciated by us all. So Trevor will give us an opportunity to remember as we light our candles those who aren't with us. We welcome you to light a candle throughout this, to pause and give your thoughts to those we are missing. Okay. <laughs> The names of those who are missing and greatly missed. Alan Bryant, Jacob, Elaine Harrison, Sean Langelan, Sybil Applequist, Lee Hornby, Finn Leyland Stratfield. Anne Myring, Richard Okoroki, Neil Dryden, Marky Palmer, Madeline McCann, Kevin Edward Fasting, Lucas Openuga. Jack, Patrick, Gillian Affleck, Alexander Slurry, Luke Durbin, Ray Buckton, Lee Boxel, Simon Hodgson Greaves, Anthony Stammers, Quentin Goodwin, Kevin Hicks, Stephen Thompson, David Wood.
you wish to, you can extinguish your candles and keep them lit if you prefer. We're now going to have a reading, and this is going to be read by Roz. Roz is the mother of Alice Ross. And I should add that Roz has written this herself. <coughs> It's a hard ask, this writing for Christmas, groping to meet the brief in a deep sea dying reef. Hope, seasonal hope. The seasonal part is fine, the family meal, turkey, too much wine, that cosy flush you feel as you gather and glow like Christmas lights. The chat and ebb and flow into the night, yes, that part's fine. I remember it well. It's the hope that's hard. When bitterness scores the page like a bitter blade, or I'm empty like an oyster shell, the pearl displaced, an empty, clear glass ball. And the inner fight of telling, ha telling it how it is, or telling it how I'd like it to be, can build to rage. Well, then it's tough to wrestle with this hope. But though it's a hard ask, I'm still here, still reaching, still bearing the heavy burden, still sharing words, though they are never enough, with you. And yes, there's hope, with dainty, damp, unfurling wings, new hatched, emerging from a chrysalis. And now we'll have the choir again and we're going to sing Silent Night. Yeah. <laughs> 
this evening will be read by David Moyering, David's mother, Anne, who went missing in 1997. <clears throat> Dear Santa, this is a busy time of year for you, as you are getting ready to whiz around the earth, bringing joy and happiness to children and adults alike. But if you could find time in your hectic schedule to pause and reflect on what is going on in the world, I'd like you to consider, including amongst presents wrapped in paper, those that do not need wrapping. What will my elves do if they do not need to busy themselves with cutting ribbons and paper, you may ask? Why don't you treat them to a nice cup of hot chocolate and marshmallows to give them an afternoon off, I answer. I'm not a great one for gifts. There's nothing I particularly want, and definitely nothing I need. But there are a few things I dream about, about that I hope you could achieve. One, a clean sea, please, to dive and splash where fish swim free, alive. Two, a large scoop of compassion or looked like ice cream on Twitter. Take out the trash of cruelty and spite that stop the fake news and the twisting of facts. The outright lies, the fake news syndrome, must give way to sanity. Three, the homeless need shelter. So why not give the lawmakers the gift of compassion to offer a sustainable solution? Four, could you please solve the fuel crisis before the coal begins to bite? and people have to choose between heating and eating. Five, while you're at it, can you stop the war? The world needs peace. So why not give the money makers the gift of empathy and generosity? World harmony may be too much to ask. If we could all put ourselves in the shoes of others and not make everything so competitive. Maybe looking after one another is something we can all do and often costs us little except our time. Six, I would ask for gentleness and compassion for all, for empathy and understanding, no judgments, no bias, no them and us. We don't need things, we want them. What do we actually need to survive? Treating others with love and respect, that's my answer. I want to know the world I leave to my children and grandchildren will be safe and secure. We all live on a beautiful globe, and together we can keep it safe and sane. It's not much that I'm asking for. I wish you, Mrs Santa, and the elves a very Merry Christmas. Much love on behalf of the entire world. Marlena, Ros, Val and Molly. Thank you so much, Deirdre. Well, how to reflect on a beautiful evening. Um, <coughs> sparkling lights of hope all around us tonight, the candles, the kind words and the warm hearts, the special messages and verses, and of course the names of all the missing people that we all think of and that touches us all tonight. The beautiful writing from the Creative Writing Group bringing joy and touching us all with such special words. And the choir, I, I feel a, a sense of applause coming on for the beautiful singing and a rounding sense of applause for all of you. <laughs> and rumour does have it that um, Nina, the choir leader, who leads so brilliantly, We'd welcome a few new choir members. So if anyone is suitably inspired and would like to burst into song anytime soon, then please get in touch and join an amazing choir. Thank you to the team tonight at the chapel for such a warm welcome and allowing everyone to have the sort of service that means so much to them. If you are able to and you would like to donate, then there will be a collection <coughs> downstairs in the reception, which you're all welcome to after the event tonight. 
that will help us provide support in the darkest <coughs> hours. And I can't tell you how much that support means to so many people right across our country. So thank you, all of you, in all the different ways that you support us. So to all of you and those of you that are watching at home, we'd like you to join in one final song. The lyrics are on your beautiful song sheets there. We'd like you to join us downstairs. And I'd like to say a personal thank you to Royal Highness and Duchess of Gloucester for joining us this evening and supporting the charity. And thank you, as always, to Sir Trevor MacDonald for being our patron too. Thank you. Please sing your hearts out. Thank <laughs> you.